welcome to day three of Intergeo 2021. We are in the spur to the end of this year's edition and today we are looking forward to the final of this great annual meeting point of the geospatial industry. So today we are going full steam ahead together with you and taking you along with us on the digital platform into the exhibition halls in Hanover. Christiane Salbach, Managing Director of the organizer DBW starts right at the beginning with an outlook on today's conference and other topics. And my colleague Günther Knappe spoke with her. Christiane Salbach, willkommen nochmal als uh, Vertreterin des Veranstalters. Zum letzten Mal hier, dritten Mal hier im Intergeo genau. TV Studio. Wir haben noch einen Tag, den Finaltag Intergeo 2021 vor uns. Gestern waren bestimmende Themen auf der Konferenz Digitale Zwillinge mhm. und BIM. Was erwarten Sie hier in der Zukunft? Also ich erwarte, dass die Entwicklung im Zusammenhang mit der Digitalisierung weiter rasant voranschreitet, wie es jetzt auch schon der Fall ist. Die Beschleunigung wird wahrscheinlich noch ein Stück weit zunehmen. Wir haben neue Technologien wie Machine Learning, wie Cloud Computing, ähm, aber auch ähm, Big Data Analytics ähm, und wie modernste Visualisierungsmethoden wie Augmented Reality, Virtual Reality oder auch Mixed Reality. Und diese ähm, Technologietrends sind Treiber von Inno Innovationen. Das haben wir tatsächlich vorgestern in, an unserem ersten Konferenztag auch deutlich gehört. Und ähm, auch Digital Twins und Building Information Modeling sind also zentrale Aspekte der Digitalisierung. Ähm, wir binden moderne Sensortechnologien ein in die digitalen Prozesse und auch das wird langfristig äh, ein meines Erachtens ganz bedeutsames äh, Thema sein. Mit positiven Auswirkungen auf sämtliche Lebensbereiche, also auf die Mobilität, auf das Wohnen, auf das Arbeiten, alles was man sich da so vorstellen kann. Einige konkrete Beispiele dazu noch? Ähm, ja, das kann ich gerne machen. Ähm, ich ähm, nenne mal ein Beispiel, auf das man vielleicht nicht sofort kommt. Das wäre zum Beispiel die Immobilienbewertung. Die steht nämlich zunehmend unter Druck. Auf der anderen Seite gibt es auf dem Markt ähm, sehr viele ähm, rein kommerzielle Produkte, also für Portale zur Immobilienbewertung. Auf der anderen Seite fordert die Immobilienwirtschaft eine stärkere Markttransparenz. Und hier sehe ich im Bereich der Digitalisierung für die Immobilienbewertung noch ein ganz erhebliches Potenzial. Und auch in den kommunalen Verwaltungen, glaube ich, haben wir noch die Möglichkeit, durch Digitalisierung unsere ähm, ja, Arbeitsabläufe und Prozesse noch weiter zu optimieren. Und ich glaube, das kann uns sehr gut gelingen, wenn wir ähm, mit ausgebildetem Personal die bestehenden Abläufe ähm, in digitale Prozesse hin entwickeln. Welche Rolle spielt in diesem Zusammenhang das Thema Sensortechnologie? Danke für das Stichwort. Ähm, ja, autonomes Fahren. Ähm, haben viele den Individualverkehr im Kopf? Ich tatsächlich etwas weniger. Ich sehe viel mehr ähm, den, den Frachtbereich und den Logistikbereich an der Stelle. Und ähm, hier werden natürlich modernste Sensortechnologien äh, benötigt, verknüpfte Sensortechnologien, smarte Sensortechnologien. Aber wir brauchen auch präzise HD-Maps, um eben diese Anwendungen wirklich auch visualisieren zu können. Und ähm, das Gleiche eben zu den Sensoren, was wir beim autonomen Fahren haben, das haben wir natürlich auch in der Luft. Das haben wir also nicht nur zu Land, sondern eben auch in der Luft bei den UAVs. Ähm, da das ist zum Beispiel eben auch ein Anwendungspunkt und natürlich auch ganz zentral Steuerung von Robotern. Und das werden Themen sein, die uns heute in der Konferenz begleiten. Insofern lade ich Sie ganz herzlich ein. Besuchen Sie die Konferenz und seien Sie live dabei. Ein spannender Tag, Christiane Salbach, herzlichen Dank. Wir freuen uns auf das Finale der Intergeo 2021. Vielen Dank. Thank you, Günther and Christiane Salva, for this overview of today's conference and the invitation to join you. So, and another area besides the conference, which also stands for inspiring presentations and exchange, is the Intergeo Expo stage. In the middle of the exhibition hall, Caroline Carnevale, Carnevale had a look around there. Thanks, Denise. Yes, I'm here in front of the Expo stage and by my side is uh, Tobias Plegger, Expo Manager. And uh, yes, uh, tell us a little bit about the two days here full of uh, interesting uh, presentations. Uh, what are your personal highlights? 
my personal highlight. So we have a full packed stage every every day from 9:30 till 5 in the afternoon, and it will be around smart city. It will be around drones. So there will be a lot of topics for the whole geo community. And tell us a little bit uh, how it works, uh, hybrid. Yeah, this is a pretty cool thing because, like, um, for everyone, it's the first time. It's not only in Hanover. It's not only digital as it was 2020 and 2019 before. No, this time we are first. Uh, we have the first integer hybrid, so you can follow the stage as you see in here in Hanover if you come around, or you can just click onto our platform where you can jump into the to the lectures and then follow them um, digitally. So finally, first time we're going hybrid, and it works pretty well. It's a lot of fun. Great. So uh, there are also a lot of visitors. Uh, they come uh, here to, to the stage. Yeah. To be honest, yesterday the stage was packed. The hallway was packed. It was it was really great to see that. But I also I know that um, we had a lot of um, visitors and viewers on um, the digital platform. So it's a lot of stuff going on at the moment. Now I'm here at the expo stage with uh, Stefanie Lamp. She is uh, Global Sales Operations at uh, Vintra. And you had yesterday uh, two presentations. Tell us a little bit about uh, your topics. Yes, cool. Well, thanks a lot for having me here. So I uh, was representing Wingtra, and Wingtra is a drone manufacturer. So we develop drones for mapping and surveying. And I was, on one hand, um, presenting our newest addition to the team, which is the Wingtra 1102. It's a new drone with new capabilities. And then I was also talking about how we mapped Zurich. So I was presenting a city map case. Okay. And let's tell a little bit. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, yeah. Being live here at Intergeo, meeting people again, how is it for you? I mean, I think it's really, really great to be here again. Um, it's such a different way of uh, connecting to people, of course, if you see them in, in person. And I'm actually quite positively, not say surprised, but uh, it's, it's, quite, it's quite busy. And for us, it's quite nice um, to meet customers and our partners. So that's really good. So thank you so much and have a good uh, day tomorrow at the Intergeo. Perfect. Thanks a lot. And uh, now back to you, Denise. So, and now let's have a look backstage because you know Günther and Caroline and Helen, but there are many, many more people. And uh, because the concept of Intergeo is hybrid, we have laid many meters of cable, brought a lot of technology into the halls, into the conference and the expo stage. And above all, a professional team of producers, of editors, of technicians, and a lot more. Nearly 30 people work for your live streaming experience on the digital platform of Intergeo and as you can see they are all really on fire for your live stream at Intergeo 2021 <laughs> so and now we will we will have a look at um, my guest last evening because I met Uwe Bacher from Hexagon Geosystems So at Intergeo's conference, the president GSI at Hexagon, Dr. Jürgen Dold, was talking about Mirror World, Germany's digital twin. In this presentation, he visualized a future in which a consistent, precise and cost-effective digital twin of Germany will help predict and mitigate disasters, support infrastructure planning, enable sustainable city planning and much more. So cloud-based visualization and collaboration platform could link this digital twin to real-time data and yield further insights through simulations. Making such information available to everyone will help governmental and private actors collabor collaborate and make informed decisions. So Hexagon's portfolio offers a range of solutions for creating and leveraging such mirror worlds. And at Hexagon 2021, Hexagon announced Metro HD City Data, which is a new offering of ultra high resolution 2D and 3D digital the twins of major cities. It is an off-the-shelf product through the HXGN content program. And about this, because I'm not the expert about this, <laughs> I'm going to talk now to Dr. Uwe Bacher from Hexagon Geosystems. Welcome to Intergeo TV. Sure. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, because um, yeah, I got a lot of briefing and I read these words and names and uh, applications, but I mean, you are here for explaining to us what it exactly means. So 
just could you tell us about this content program and why does Hexagon offer high definition city data as a part of it? Yeah, let's start with the content program. Content program is our data program where we offer countrywide aerial data uh, over the whole US, mm -hmm. uh, captured every year or every second year, it depends a bit, in uh, really high resolution, 15 centimeters uh, usually. And also we do the same for Europe also rapidly. Uh, now we have cap captured it for huge parts of Europe uh, already the second time. It's a resolution at the moment, 30 centimeters, but we also move into 15 centimeters on a really wide coverage. And this means we offer aerial imagery, but also derived products from this, like uh, elevation models or land use data um, for really large areas in a consistent way that is really useful for uh, analysis. And that's also a bit the basis for, uh, as Jürgen mentioned, it, the digital twin for a whole country. If you have enough information, then uh, you can really manage a country or a, a if a problem or a disaster happens, you need this consistent information. Okay, so what exactly does the Metro, Met, Metro so HD e include? <laughs> Metro HD. <laughs> yeah, uh, Metro HD, or as we also call it, city program. Um, much easier, so city program. It's much okay. easier, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, that contains, in addition to our uh, wide area coverage, uh, city data, so we okay. really, uh, take data or acquire data uh, for yeah, certain cities like Munich, New York, Tokyo, what we already did mm -hmm. in a really high resolution. At the moment it's five centimeters, so you really can see small mm -hmm. details mm -hmm. on the uh, imagery. And um, this is really important because cities are growing more and more and uh, there is a, a huge flow of people moving into the cities and that also means in the context of climate change and, and all the things that happened over the last years that the management of a city becomes more and more complex. So there is a huge need for um, yeah, managing cities and to manage something you really need to know what you manage. So you need to have an understanding of the spatial relationship between uh, assets and buildings and roads and, and so on. And that's uh, to, to have a, a smart city, as we call it, if we connect all the data from different sources, uh, we need a kind of digital twin of the city. So uh, really building inside a computer or our network the digital representation of the city, meaning where are the buildings, what are the buildings looking like, uh, how are they connected, and uh, we don't stop only with the geodata here. We also include additional data from public sources, from, from other information sources. And then uh, starting with an analysis on, on this to really offer the decision makers in the end an uh, easy to use dashboard uh, that they can yeah, just take to make the decision, to have all the information that is necessary for them at the right moment in a easy way and just by looking onto a dashboard, usually web-based, mm -hmm. to get all this information. This seems so it. fascinating to me to capture all those data from different sources is, and then yeah. you have one platform and you see everything in a, a different anchor and yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but also you, you are focused to the right thing. Yeah. So we have different applications for different mm -hmm. use cases mm -hmm. and really the, the right person gets the right view on the data mm -hmm. at the uh, right moment. You talked about the different sources and how does Hexagon capture the data? From uh, to capture the data, we developed a, a really unique sensor system. It's called the City Mapper. It's a hybrid sensor system uh, consisting of uh, six cameras, um, two of them pointing directly to the ground. They have uh, cameras in RGB, so red, green, and blue, and also near infrared camera. And then, at, in addition to this, we have four oblique cameras that are pointing 45 degrees to the front, to the back, and to both sides. Mm -hmm. And in addition to this, and that makes it really unique, uh, we have added a LiDAR scanner to it, so a first-class LiDAR scanner, what is an active system to measure the um, 
yeah, let's say the elevations of every single object on ground. So, and by combining these data sources, these complementary um, yeah, sources or sensors into one platform, we are able to capture a really huge variety of different data types and combining them in a way that um, we use the strengths of both uh, subsystems, so to say, uh, and to overcome the weaknesses of the other system mm -hmm. by, by doing this. Mm -hmm. So that's a, our, our main source. So we usually take the, the sensor. It's quite a, a, a huge thing, 80 kilograms mm -hmm. uh, installed in a, a manned aircraft mm -hmm. and flying over the cities uh, in a yeah, usually uh, pattern up and down. The city the mapper, city, okay. City mapper, okay. yes. <laughs> and um, what applications is the data typically, typically used for? Um, to whom? Yeah, the applications are, are very wide, so mm -hmm. it's, it has everything to do with management of the city somehow. Mm -hmm. But let Security, me infrastructure. Secu infrastructure, but also a lot of uh, going into sustainability of, of cities. Because as we have added a LiDAR scanner to it, we are able to, to measure very well vegetation and ground in one. So we are able to model, for example, trees by our AI-based analysis uh, software or tools. We are able to do a land use classification. Uh -huh. So we know where the uh, surface is sealed or imperious, where water cannot um, flow away, let's say, and also where heat islands uh, might be in the end. And then by combining this with um, tree data, we are able to model heating in, in the city. We are also able to uh, manage uh, fresh air flows or uh, all these things to get really a sustainable city in the end. And that's, um, I didn't mention all the products yet, so we have, have a really wide variety of data that we produce from our uh, hybrid sensor data. So starting from image data, this uh, side looking gives us information about the facade, so we know uh, what buildings are used for, what how many stories they have. And so, by combining all these data sets, we are able to have a, a really, I always call it unlimited number of applications. Wow, that's and, cool. And that's, yeah. How can I get access to it? Uh, if you access it, we, are, we have our uh, sales channels directly okay. inside Hexagon. We work with partners, we work with okay. integrators who use the data and uh, yeah, put more value on it somehow. And we also have an online platform, HXDR, where we mm. offer it online so really to stream or to access it uh, via web portal. So it's pretty easy. Just uh, click on our web page or uh, mm -hmm. contact us to get more of the data. Mm -hmm. yeah. Super cool. That sounds so interesting. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for joining us here on InterGeo TV, Uwe Bacher from Hexagon yeah. Geosystems. Yeah, it was a pleasure being here. Thanks a lot for having me here. Thank you. Yeah. So we now wish you a great day at Intergeo 21. Whether you are in the exhibition halls in Hanover or browsing the streams or the expo area on the digital platform. We will see you again at 1 p.m. and would like to invite you already now to the closing at 4.15 p.m. at the expo stage. So see you then.